Boy, oh boy, oh boy, solar energy worldwide. We've just seen these numbers revealed by global sources showing solar energy last year grew by 86%. And Tony Siebert, he, a while back, he made some predictions about solar. Now, most experts at the IEA obviously said, yeah, that's a little crazy. That's Tony being Tony. Honestly, when I saw his predictions, I said, well, Tony Siebert is pretty much always right. So we should be listening. Well, Tony got this one wrong, but in a good way. He predicted that the world would move to solar batteries and wind at a drastic, drastic pace, at an incredibly fast pace. Now, on the channel, I've made some so-called optimistic videos talking about Tony's predictions, saying I agree with him and we should be listening to him. And well, solar is actually being installed even faster than what he predicted. I mean, people said, he was being optimistic about solar, saying it wouldn't happen that quickly, nowhere near, it was insane. And I actually got a lot of those criticisms on my channel as well. Well, crazy thing is that solar is growing at the fastest pace in human history and it's just getting faster almost every single month. Hello, my friends, welcome to the channel. I'm Sam Evans, you're watching The Electric Viking. Great to have you with us. Now, fortunately, I feel privileged to be a part of this solar revolution, Resync Solar. They installed my solar system. It's um, just charged my EV today. I paid nothing to charge my EV, the XPG6. And it's it actually puts out, oh, I'm getting a, a massive amount of power. I'm getting about a, uh, an average of 120 kilowatt hours of solar generation daily. That's enough to charge two EV battery packs every single day. Crazy. And anyway, guys, if you want to get solar, be part of the solar revolution, you absolutely should do it. It's a no-brainer when it comes to price. There's estimates that come out of the, of, the, of the United States, and this is official data based on solar systems, what they cost today on average. Now, this data is kind of wrong for, for places outside of the US because solar is much more expensive in the US. It's still great value, but it's much cheaper outside of America. Here in Australia, solar is about half the price of what it is in America. But they're saying in the US... The payback is an an average of forty five thousand US dollars on your system. In other words, you'll pay your system off and you'll be in the the black in the positive by forty five thousand US dollars. So it's an absolute no brainer. So if you want to use Resync Solar, who have the best reviews here in Australia, I'll put a link for them in the description, and that link actually will give you a bit of a discount on your system. So what's going on worldwide here? Well. The world is on track to add 593 gigawatts of solar power this year. That is incredible because last year, solar grew by 87% versus the year before that, right? There was an 87% increase in solar in 2023 versus 2022. And everyone thought, oh, yeah, okay, things will slow down now. I mean, they haven't. It's grown an additional 30% this year, or 29.4%. Let's just round that off to 30%. So 87% growth last year. On top of that, a further 30% growth this year. That means that around 600 gigawatt of solar panels will be installed. A huge amount of that, a bit more than half of that, is being installed in China. Now in 2024, 292 gigawatts of solar capacity was installed by the end of July. 292 gigawatts by the end of July, and they're saying we're on track for 593 by the end of this year. Now, looking at this chart, you can see that um, this is way above estimates, way, way, way above estimates. And I would like a personal apology from the hundreds and hundreds of people who have honestly publicly, um, you know, um, this is very tongue in cheek, but it would be kind of nice if a lot of those people actually said, yeah, man, you know what, we slammed you for saying solar was gonna grow at this crazy pace. You were so, we said you're an idiot. You're, you're, you're an optimist. Some people have said it in a nice way, or you're just being an optimist. Some people said it in a really negative way, saying, you know what, solar, it won't work for most houses. Solar doesn't make sense rah, 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 for all these different reasons. Uh, yeah, well, hey, you know what, whatever happens, I don't, I don't think I'll get it. any apologies from any of those negative commenters, but this is amazing to see. now. What this means is solar is growing faster than anyone ever imagined. Oz Bandit has said that this even surpasses Tony Sieber's projections. Global capacity to hit 2.24 terawatt by 2024 
with eight to nine terawatts likely by 2030, right? Not too far off the entire planet's energy needs. Battery energy storage is booming as well, pushing us toward a fully renewable energy future much faster than predicted. Now guys, I predicted by 2030, most of the world's energy would be provided by solar batteries, some of it by wind. And the reason that I said that was because of the cost declines of both those technologies and the incredible increases in efficiency. Not just efficiency, but longevity. Now solar panels, pretty much all the panels you can buy today have a 25 year warranty. They're guaranteed for 70% of the original capacity after 25 years. That's amazing. What about batteries? Same scenario. Now batteries have a warranty. The newest ones from Cato, the biggest battery company in the world, for 1 million kilometers. 1 million kilometers with a guarantee of 80% of their original capacity. And those batteries cost half what batteries cost only a few years ago. So batteries are now lasting far, far longer and they are less than half the price what they, for what they were a few years ago. So if you look at the trajectory of those technologies, there's no reason to suggest that the efficiency of solar panels won't continue to go up. It is every year. Efficiency goes up, price goes down. Same thing for batteries. That will continue to make, and that will continue to drive down prices, increase supply, increase manufacturing of those products, and really disrupt coal, fossil fuels. Coal and fossil fuels are not getting any cheaper. Solar is growing faster than what basically every expert predicted, even the very optimistic Tony Sieber. Solar power is accelerating now globally at a pace no one would have thought would happen. Not even the most bullish projections from a decade ago. The whole world is transitioning to solar at a speed that's making other energy sources obsolete. In 2019, the rest of the world was responsible for 74% of total solar deployments. While China was significantly ramped up, has significantly ramped up, the rest of the world isn't lagging behind. Countries like the US, India, Germany, and Brazil have all seen record growth in installations. And by 2024, the rest of the world will have installed 1.2 terawatts of cumulative capacity. What's staggering, says Oz Bandit, is how fast this growth curve is steepening. Just a decade ago, industry projections for global solar additions in 2024 were incredibly conservative. Even the most optimistic estimates, aside from Tony Sieber, never foresaw the world adding 593 gigawatts in a single year. As we're seeing now, in just five years, global solar capacity, including China, has more than doubled, surging to 2.24 terawatts by the end of 2024. So if we've more than doubled global solar capacity in five years, we're actually on track to double it again within the next three years. Can you see how things are, are working here with this? What, what is very clearly exponential growth here? This isn't just a slow energy transition though. It's a complete overhaul. Powered by the rapid deployment of solar, which is slashing costs and scaling faster than any energy source in the history of mankind. The world is not just transitioning to solar. It's being transformed by it. Traditional energy systems, whether coal, gas, or even nuclear, are being left behind as solar rides its S-curve to dominance. This is the energy disruption that will define the next decade, and it's happening much faster than anyone thought was possible. At this pace, we're looking at global solar capacity reaching 8 to 9 terawatts by 2030, far exceeding any earlier projections. Solar's growth is creating knock-on effects across the entire energy landscape, and no sector is benefiting more than battery energy storage systems, BESS. To balance grids and make solar energy usable 24-7, BESS installations are ramping up in parallel. By 2030, battery installation capacity could realistically hit 3 terawatts, driven by the growing need to store and manage this explosive rise in solar energy. To give you some context here of the incredible demand for battery storage, Tesla can't keep up. I mean, Tesla has now a two-year backlog for its mega batteries. That includes its projected capacity for its battery mega factory in China. 
Now you can see why Tesla is ramping up its battery energy storage systems as fast as it possibly can, because it's making huge amounts of money on those batteries. But consumers and businesses um, are getting an incredibly good solution. Latest generation lithium ion phosphate batteries are much, much cheaper, and they also last for much, much longer. The, en the synergy between solar and battery energy storage is setting the stage, says Oz Bandit, for a fully renewable energy system. Solar's rapid growth and battery storage accelerating deployment are making it possible to imagine a world where energy is clean, cons constant, and cost-effective. At this rate, we're heading toward a global energy system that is solar powered and storage backed, completely revolutionizing how we generate, store and consume energy. Now, a lot of people, naysayers, they will say this, the sun doesn't always shine. Now I can confirm to you, very honestly, if you wanna see the data, you can even come to my house. You can see it on my app, I'll show you on my phone if you don't believe me, because some people are very, very livid against this. Solar does work when it's cloudy. In fact, it works even when it's pouring with rain. Guys, I honestly make an, an incredible amount of solar power, even when it's pouring with rain. In fact, the other day, I was looking at my app on my phone, when it, there was a, a rainstorm, I was still producing about 20% of my solar panels capacity, which was, uh, in fact, that's about three times more than I actually need to run my own household. So yes, these situations do happen, right? Where the sun doesn't shine, and we get less energy from solar panels. Not none, but definitely a lot less. And that's why we are building out more than we actually need. So most of the time we'll have more than we need. And then during those rare situations where we don't have any sun for a while, we'll have enough. Keep in mind as well that 90% of the world's population lives on the sun belt. And looking beyond 2030, with solar on its steep S curve, we're likely entering an era where energy costs will not just stabilize, they may effectively reach negative levels. Now, Stephen Mark Ryan, I recently had him on the channel. I interviewed Stephen. We talked for two and a half hours. It was a very long time. And he predicts that energy costs will hit marginal. And he, in basically saying energy will be essentially free. When will that happen? Well, I can't say for sure, but I agree with Stephen Mark Ryan and other experts have said the same thing energy will be essentially free. And this is going to marginalize the big energy companies. Right now, they have a big hold over us, right? Oil and gas companies, we have to buy their products, we have to pay for being connected to the network, we've got to pay for you know filling up our gas-powered vehicles or other people's gas-powered vehicles. We have to pay for electricity to run our households, huge amounts of money. And this does, this does cause a lot of stress for households. This will all change. With solar's marginal cost approaching zero, paired with advanced storage systems, the energy landscape of the future could see costs plummet to unprecedented lows, fundamentally reshaping economies and industries worldwide. Oz Bandit says this is, isn't just about cheap energy anymore, it's about the possibility of free energy, driving the next phase of human progress. Just imagine if energy was free and incredibly abundant. What could we do as a human race? What could we achieve? How much pollution could we potentially remove from the atmosphere? What products could we make? What dreams could we fulfill? I mean, honestly, for a lot of businesses, the number one reason they can't do more is the cost of electricity. Thank you for watching.